All right, let's take a look at how to install VirtualBox on a Mac. So I'm here on virtualbox.org, downloading for OS X hosts. And in my case, this is an Intel Mac. If you have an M1 Mac, I'm not sure whether there's an M1 build or not yet. Uh, it does work on Intel Macs, uh, which is where I'm installing. So all we need to do is wait a little bit for the installer to download. I'll probably skip through most of that. I don't wanna make you sit here and wait for this giant package to download. So we'll go ahead and skip that. Alrighty, there we go. So everything's downloaded. Now I just open up the DMG file and I can go ahead and start the installer and then we'll be able to get VirtualBox installed. So let's do that. All right, so all I need to do is uh, double click on this package file. Inside the DMG, there's just a package file. I'll get a warning. I have to allow the installer to run. I just go through the standard prompts, next, yes, install, type in my password, like you can see me doing here. Uh, that should start the install process. It can be fairly long. It can take five to 10 minutes. I've sort of fast forwarded through it here. This prompt is for uh, VirtualBox. Uh, it's, it's warning me that I need to install a kernel extension. Uh, sorry, that was in Chinese. The default language on my machine is Chinese. I can now move the installer to the trash and we'll go ahead and start VirtualBox. And right away, we're going to hit some problems because I did click OK on that prompt to install the kernel extension just a moment ago. But, but you'll see after I download Ubuntu and try to install it, that the virtual machine is not going to start up correctly because uh, that kernel extension hasn't actually been uh, allowed yet from within the settings on my Mac. We'll do that. We'll do that step a little bit later. So now I just need to download Ubuntu. And again, I'll just cut past that. So here we go through the magic of fast forward. Here's Ubuntu desktop. Uh, so now I'll start up uh, VirtualBox and I've got this Ubuntu ISO file or ISO file. This is how I'm going to install Ubuntu in the VM. I need to create a new VM, give it a name. It's 64-bit Linux, so the type and version are correct here. Uh, that's, that's what it should be. I'll hit continue. Uh, I want to give it four gigabytes of RAM. That's about the minimum for a modern Linux distribution. Uh, I will create a new virtual hard disk for this thing. We'll create a VDI, a virtual box disk image. I'll go ahead and click continue. Uh, and we will dynamically allocate the disk, meaning that the disk will actually be a file that grows over time as I put things onto the disk. So I will start this at 80 gigabytes, or excuse me, 100 gigabytes, which should be plenty. Because it's dynamically allocated, it won't actually take up 100 gigabytes. When I write files to the disk, the virtual disk will, will grow. So now I go into the settings for storage. I find my IDE controller for my virtual CD drive, and I want to... Uh, from there, I want to go ahead and choose my ISO file for the Ubuntu installer. So that's what we're going to do next. So I go back over to the right-hand side here, click on choose a disk file. Uh, from there, I can, okay, I have to allow access to my folders and directories from VirtualBox. I go to downloads, there's my ISO. I click open. That's now inserted into the virtual CD drive on my VM. So if I click start, this should start the VM. But you'll recall I said there's a problem. I didn't install the VirtualBox kernel driver, or rather, I didn't authorize it to run. So we need to do that. So if you get an error like the one on my screen here, it means you need to go into the settings on your Mac and actually authorize that VirtualBox kernel driver to run. So that's what we're going to do next. You'll get some errors and warnings. VirtualBox will, will quit unexpectedly, most likely. And then again, you'll need to go into settings and fix that, which we'll go ahead and do right now. Right, so from system preferences here, if I go to security and privacy, down here you'll see there's this warning, some software from Oracle America wants to be allowed to run. I unlock the settings, I click on allow, and then I say restart, and we'll have to restart the machine. So at this point, you'll have to reboot. So I'll do that now. And when I come back after some video editing magic, we've rebooted. Now, when I open up VirtualBox and I try to run my virtual machine, it should work. And we'll just double check that everything looks right. Ubuntu is in the virtual CD drive, so we're good there. I click OK. I can now go ahead and click Start. And this time, the virtual machine should start up the way it's supposed to. So this time, everything should start and function normally. And you'll get a couple of warnings about things like mouse capture and resizing the screen. Uh, that's okay. You can, you can stick with most of the default settings there. I'm going to 
choose that Ubuntu boot option from the top of that list here in the VirtualBox window. Uh, you can see that right now Ubuntu appears to be super, super tiny. We're, we're going to fix that later. Um, it's because of the Retina displays on newer Macs, the VM starts out really, really small, but you, you can scale it up later, which I'll show you how to do. Now we just wait for the Ubuntu system to boot to the desktop in VirtualBox. Uh, you might get a couple of warnings as you're doing this. VirtualBox will ask for permissions for things like the speakers or the microphone. Uh, you'll see the installer will start up like it's done here. Uh, and then I just click on Install Ubuntu and we can start the process. So uh, let me switch to Scaled mode, which will allow me to scale the window here up and down in size. Um, I'll just click Switch. Okay, great. Now I can make the window bigger or smaller as needed. I'll click on Install Ubuntu, uh, and then we'll go ahead and choose English US for the keyboard settings. Continue. Uh, it will be a normal install. I do want to download updates during the install, and I want third-party software support. Okay, so I'll check those boxes and click Continue. And then we'll essentially fast forward through the majority of the install process. It's, it's pretty boring when you're installing Ubuntu. What you mostly do is you sit there and you wait for it to install itself and to fetch updates. So that's what's going to happen next. We'll, we'll just sit here and wait for Ubuntu to do its thing. And again, I'll probably fast forward through some of this. So I click Install Now. Uh, that will erase the virtual hard drive and install Ubuntu there. I click Continue to confirm that that partition table that just came up is what I want. Uh, I choose a time zone. I'll just go with, I guess, China, because that's where I am. And then I'll click Continue. Uh, I then need to fill in a username, uh, a host name, and a username and password for login. So I put in my real name as the owner of the machine. You don't have to. You can put in anything you want. I give the computer a name. This will be the machine's host name. I pick a username and then I assign that user a secure password. And then I'll check the radio button for require my password to log in, because that's what I want, and then continue. And that, that will actually start the install. So at this point, Ubuntu has formatted the disks the way they're supposed to be formatted. Uh, I've set up all the permissions for my first non-root user on the machine, which I called JDP. And now we're just going to install all of our software packages and again, after the magic of time travel, we get to the end of the install process here, and the system is going to ask us to restart. So at this point, we have to restart the virtual machine. So I'll just click on Restart Now, uh, and then again, I'll fast forward through most of this. In a minute, we'll come back up to the Ubuntu desktop, and then we can start installing additional tools. All right, so you can see after the magic of time travel, we are coming back up to the Ubuntu desktop, although this time we're not going to get an install prompt. We've already removed the ISO file from the virtual CD drive. We're back at the desktop. Uh, so I'll give the password for JDP, and then we'll be able to log in and, and start using Ubuntu just like it was running directly on the hardware. We've got our first virtual machine all set up on top of Mac OS. Okay, so we come up to the desktop here. Uh, if you want, you can link online accounts from Google or Nextcloud or Microsoft, or if you have an Ubuntu One account, you can link that. I'm gonna ignore most of that and, and not log into anything or send any info. I'll keep privacy services off. I don't like any of this stuff. I, I like my VM to be simple. Uh, there is one last thing I wanna do before I'm really ready to use the VM. I go here to Devices and I click on Insert guest editions. And, and what this will do is it will insert another virtual CD drive that this time contains a script, which you can see I've just chosen to run. Uh, it contains a script that's going to install some additional drivers into the virtual machine uh, that will allow me to turn on extra features of VirtualBox. So I'll have the ability to copy and paste to and from my host machine's clipboard on my Mac into the Ubuntu environment after I turn these on. I'll also have the ability to get a higher resolution display in my VM so things will look clearer. Uh, you can see that uh, at this point I'm going to have to reboot the VM. I have to hit return to close the installer window here. Um, there's also some Ubuntu updates that I should fetch. So I installed from an older Ubuntu ISO image. There's been a lot of updates to 2110 since it was released. Uh, so I want to install those additional updates. 
And again, this, this is a long process. I'm installing a lot of new stuff, so we'll go ahead and fast forward through most of that process. So let's just get through the install for the updates and then we'll reboot. And at that point, we should have VBox Guest Editions installed as well as a new kernel and some new utilities, whatever was included in the Ubuntu updates. And you can see here I can expand this, this uh, detail view to see exactly what's going on as I install packages. So if it looks like it's stuck or you want to see what's going on, you can open up this v detail view here. Okay, it looks like it's almost done. So if I wait just a couple more seconds, the updater will finish. Uh, and then we can go ahead and reboot. Okay, we need to restart to finish installing the updates. Great, we needed to restart anyway to install VirtualBox Guest Edition, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so the virtual machine is restarting. Again, we'll sort of skip over the boring stuff where it boots itself up, and we'll go right back to the desktop. Okay, here we are. We're back at the login screen, so I'll click on my username again, and I'll type in a password, my password, and then we'll be back in Ubuntu. And we can go into the terminal in Ubuntu and double check that the VirtualBox guest editions stuff got installed. We'll basically we'll run lsmod to list out all of the Linux kernel modules, and we'll be looking for the ones that correspond to VirtualBox, or, or rather to VirtualBox's guest editions tool. So let's take a look at those. So actually the first thing I'll do is I'll go to activities and I'll open up the settings and from here I can actually change the display resolution inside the VM which should make it appear bigger and clearer on my screen. So this will only work if the guest editions was successfully installed. So I want to try and choose something that has the same uh, height to width ratio as my Macintosh or as my MacBook's monitor. So we'll, we'll try something that's I think 16.9. Uh, so let's play around with this. We'll, we'll try to find one that's a good fit. Okay, 16.10, apply, and yeah, okay, that looks okay uh, when it's scaled up. So this is probably an okay resolution. I could use this 1920 by 1200, or I could take it down a notch to 1920 by 1080 and take a look at that. So that's also all right. I don't see much difference. Uh, so I'll just leave it at 1920 by 1080, 16.9. Uh, and when I turn on display scaling and I make the window full screen, it looks pretty good. So I'm just going to leave the desktop resolution like that. Uh, and then I did promise I would show you how to double check for sure that the uh, VirtualBox editions are installed. So we're going to open up a terminal window and do that. So I go back up to activities, and this time I'm going to look for terminal. And I'm going to run lsmod to list out the active kernel modules. And I'm looking for a particular kernel module, so I'll pipe the output of lsmod into grep, and I'll search for lsmod grep-i vbox, and you can see there's a, a driver here called vbox guest, or a module called vbox guest, and then there's a couple others like vbox video. If you see vbox guest in your list of kernel modules when you run lsmod, then that means everything works, and you have installed the guest additions inside your VM. All right, that is it for this video. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you in the next one.